And gunfire erupts inside a northwest side apartment complex. It leaves this 16-year-old. Neighbors say that the shooting sounded like a war zone. 60 to 70 rounds had to be dropped in, uh, in the course of maybe 15 seconds. It sounded like it was Iraq out here, like multiple guns, like from different guns. It was real, it was real, it was real scary. I was in my apartment. I heard it all the way from in my apartment. Oh, most definitely. It sounded just like a, probably an AK-47 or something that would, you know, shoot repeatedly without stopping. I can tell you the moment that we drove up here, we knew this was a very bad scene, a very grim scene. And the second we got up here, we could hear loved ones of the victims, and you can hear them right now off in the distance. I don't know, I feel like my life stopped. And with my baby dad, my life stopped. I don't feel alive anymore. February 25th, 2019. A family's life was about to be drastically changed by events that would occur that day. Unexpecting to them, their son, Adrian Gaynor Jr., was about to become another statistic in the deadly gang feud between rapper Julio Fulio's alleged gang KTA, Kill Them All, and Young and Ace's alleged gang ATK, Ace to Kill, Aim to Kill, that has been plaguing the streets of Jacksonville, Florida. Adrian Gaynor Jr. was commonly known by the alias Bibi Osama, aka Bibi. By age, he was just still a child at 16 years, not yet even experiencing the fullness of life. But he held ties to alleged KTA gang affiliate, Charles Jones, also known as Julio Fulio, and that placed his life in danger. Before his final moments would come, where assailants preyed on his life. Bibby was warned about the upcoming jeopardy his life was in by loved ones close to him. One week prior to his demise, his close friend, Therese Powell, known as the rapper Kay Shorty, tried to talk him out of being in the company of Julio Fulio for his own safety. Around February 18th, 2019, a week before Bibby was targeted, K. Shorty called him from behind prison walls as he was locked up at the time. His words were, I see you out here with Fulio, but don't get caught up in that. You know how bad they want him and they'll get anybody just to hurt him. Before he died, a week before he died, he called, I called him on the jail phone and I say, I say, I see you out there. If you return, I see you with uh, Fulio, you know what I mean? I'm like, but don't get caught up in that, bro. I was like, you know how bad they want him. They'll get anybody just to hurt him. Bibby would brush it off, saying he's not in deep into that lifestyle, just enjoying the music and concerts, so there's no need to worry. K Shorty, knowing how dangerous the situation was getting between the two gangs, again tried to persuade Bibby to keep his distance, telling him, they know who you is now. Even if you ain't dissing, you around them, so you're part of it. But you like, but you done got in the trailers, they know who you is now. You feel me? Like even if you ain't dissing, you around them, so you're a part of it. And that's how that's how he ended up happening to him. That would be the last conversation he had with his friend, Bibby. The morning of February 25th, Bibby went to school as he would on any regular day. Ironically, he attended the same school where Julio Fulio was shot as a teen, Grand Park High School. And guess what school he was going to? Grand Park, the same school I got shot getting out there. He going to the same school. Bibby would come home from school like always to hang out and do what friends normally would in an urban environment, like where Julio was at his grandmother's house. Estimated time between 2 and 3 p.m., given the account of what happened by Julio Fulio, who considered Bibby as a brother. He was like, this like, that's my little twin, like, you know, I got him tatted on my face. That's my little brolo, okay. One day, I was at my godmama house in the hood where we from, on 45th. And every day after school, he will come to me, like, he coming straight to me, we chopping it up, we smoking, like, you know? On this day, Bibby broke routine. He checked in with Fulio. But this time, instead of staying put at Fulio's grandmother's residence, 
he decided to head to where it was known as Hilltop. I'm like, look, bro, it's hot outside, like the police. You know, I ain't even think about no, like, niggas. Like, I ain't even talking, like, bro, the police out there, bro. Like, don't walk nowhere, bro. Sit here with me until it's time for you to go wherever you need to go. You know what I'm saying? Wait till the sun go down or something. Baby, however, was accustomed to being comfortable, as he would say, in the hood. But that same comfort and not heeding Fulio's word that day would end his life minutes later. The last time Fulio would see Bibby was when he told him the words, I love you, bro. Be safe. Bibby headed out and made his way to Hilltop. The time was approximately 2.30 p.m. Bibby was in the Hilltop Village apartment complex parking lot on West 45th Street, where according to news reporters, he went to visit a friend. The suspects in mask, who were on his trail, caught him off guard. And according to eyewitness accounts, they chased him to the back of the parking lot, where he was confirmed shot at least once. Uh, eyewitnesses are telling us now that Gaynor uh, was being chased to this exact spot where he lost his life. Just before 3 p.m., 911 calls would come in, stating there was what sounded like a war zone in the parking lot of the apartment complex. It sounded like it was Iraq out here, like multiple guns, like from different guns. It sounded just like a probably an AK-47 or something that would, you know, shoot repeatedly without stopping. When officers showed up, they found Bibby lying in a pool of blood, passed away. Julio Fulio would find himself burdened with hurt upon receiving calls of the tragedy that just occurred. My big brother called me, Jit, where you at? They said, you dead in here, Tom. I'm like, hell no. I go on Facebook. A little boy just got killed in the hilltop, like 16. So I'm like, they're like, yeah, he had on a uniform or a gray, a gray sweater, burgundy shirt. I'm like, oh my God. Like, I just hang up the phone. One of my own um, god brothers walk in the house. He's like, bro, they say baby dead, bro. Meanwhile, his family was sent into a state of shock and trauma. His mother stated the chilling words. When her baby died, her life stopped. She doesn't feel alive anymore. I don't know, I feel like my life stopped. When my baby died, my life stopped. I don't feel alive anymore. This is the sad reality of the gang lifestyle and culture of retaliations that leave many youths like Adrian Gaynor Jr., AKA Bibby, lying in the grave before they even have a chance to live. In a twist of gruesome and unremorseful events, opposing gang members that wanted to taunt Fulio flooded online making a mockery of the team's passing. One such individual in particular was Hakeem Robinson, known as the rapper Queso, who was allegedly affiliated to ATK. Queso was ruthless, flashing guns, posting playful clips laughing at Bibby's homicide, rapping about his demise, and even laughing at Bibby's mother, marching for justice for her son. It was a cold-blooded act, but it's telling of the mentality of the toxic lifestyle. Hey, bye bye. I just threw that nigga, bro. That nigga dead. He can't come back. And it's slow. Bibby's mother went on to speak of the horrors that they endured after those allegedly responsible for ending her son's life would spit and urinate on his grave and mock them every chance they had. Queso went as far as putting Bibby's image on a music project's cover, along with other opposing gang affiliates they allegedly murdered and posted it online to promote his project, disrespectfully titled, Bibby Out. Cops would be hot on the trail, trying to piece together the suspects in Bibby's homicide, and the evidence led their path straight to Queso about two years after the crime. At the time, Queso was already behind bars along with his father and brother, facing a charge for the hit on another individual, which was rumored to be retaliation for his other brother's tragic demise. Crime appeared to be a family affair. He is also charged with second degree murder in the 2020 death of Charles McCormick, AKA rapper Little Buck. His father, Abdul Robinson Sr. and his brother, Abdul Robinson Jr. are also arrested in connection to the crime. JSO says the Robinsons are linked to the group ATK. Queso nearly became free to walk the streets again and he was on the verge of bonding out for his attempted hit case 
when he was charged with first-degree murder in the homicide of 16-year-old Adrian Gaynor Jr., aka Bibby. This is where the chilling details about Bibby's final moments came out when a witness report on police documents was made public. According to the eyewitness accounts, Queso and his affiliate named Whitaker drove to Hilltop from one side to another and parked for approximately 20 minutes at one spot before Bibby and another person, Pratt, was spotted under a gazebo. Robinson, aka Queso, and his affiliate exited the vehicle carrying firearms. His affiliate had a long AR-style rifle and Queso had an AR pistol. His affiliate, Whitaker, ran after Pratt and Queso chased Bibby firing as he ran. The witness went on to state that Bibby then fell to the ground and covered his head with his hands. Queso then ran up close range and shot Bibby in the back of the head or neck as Bibby continued to try and shield for his life. Both Queso and Whitaker is said to have returned to their vehicle, a gray or silver Nissan Maxima, and left. With these first-hand accounts from witnesses and surveillance footage along with photographs and videos of Queso bragging online about the homicide, Why you had to leave? Why you ain't stay with me? With me? Why you had to leave? Bibi! <laughs> Investigators had all they need to try him for first-degree hit. Footage would surface online of officers breaking the news about him being investigated for the murder of Bibby and the reality of what he was facing finally weighed on him. Queso was in the room in disbelief and denial of what was happening, but it was indeed happening. Before the footage ends, his words were, everybody pray for me. You know where that is? You know where that is? Bibby ring a bell to you? Yeah, yeah. I want to speak with my lawyer. Want to speak with your lawyer? Yes. Okay. All right. Oh, dead. Everybody pray for me. The same one who allegedly pulled the trigger was asking for saving grace. But that's life. No matter who you are, when it comes to life behind the prison cell, oftentimes, God is the one turned to. Forgetting that in the moment of taking another's life, God was left out of the equation. Bibby's mother never stopped fighting for justice. She was out in the rain rallying, and finally, it looks like some justice will be served and closure can come for Bibby's family. I just want justice for my child. I'm going to rock this city until they get justice for my baby. Queso is currently still behind bars, facing the consequences of his actions and going through the legal court process of his case. Hopefully after due course, the ones responsible are held accountable. On the outside, the back and forth still continues, and Bibby's name continues to be disrespected in songs like ATK alleged member Young and Aces, Who I Smoke. The song samples one of the most iconic classics, Vanessa Carlton's A Thousand Miles. It sparked a brief backlash online, but she stood by her approval of clearing the sample for use, arguing if the race was reversed, it would be no problem with the street lifestyle expressed within art. The cycle of bloodshed and pain continues. Maybe one day, the senseless killing will come to an end, and youths can know what it means to live a full life. R.I.P. Adrian Gaynor Jr., a.k.a. Bibby.